Alright, so now that pretty much everything except for the finals have concluded with the light flyweight division in the 2016 Rio Olympic Games, I wanted to definitely give some props uh, to the two bronze medalists, Joannis Aguilagos of Cuba and Nico Hernandez of the United States of America. Nico Miguel Hernandez, pardon me for that. Um, and uh, just wanted to give them props, you know, for what they managed to pull off. Uh, Joannis Aguilagos had a first round bye. In the round of 16, he defeated Galaya Fai of Great Britain, who had gone into that fight um, looking pretty damn good after his first fight. Uh, Galaya Fai was doing solid. Um, I, I had scored uh, the, the fight between Argilagos and, and Yafai uh, two rounds to one. It seemed like uh, all three of the judges had it the same, two rounds to one. Uh, one of them favored uh, Argilagos, one of them favored Yafai. It was a split decision. Um, just a good, solid fight, good, solid boxing from both of them. I thought that Yafai started off really well when the first round. I thought Argilagos managed to catch up in the second and then kind of pull away in the third. Uh, so that was just good, solid boxing from him. And uh, the quarterfinals, he fought against Peter Warui of Kenya, who, as I, as some of you may have noticed um, from a couple of my uh, previous videos, um, got what I considered to be a bad decision, a bit of a robbery, over Liu Bin of China. He won that fight by split decision, in spite of the fact that I thought that Liu Bin can clearly dominated him just offensively, defensively, hurt him badly, and even scored a... a eight round uh, standing eight count uh, excuse me standing eight count not an eight round <laughs> standing eight count but um uh Johannes Argilagos managed to cleanly outbox uh, Peter Waterui in a similar fashion uh didn't have any drama or um, controversial uh, judging or refereeing in this fight uh, managed to defeat Waterui which is clean uh technical outboxing and went on to the semifinals where he wound up meeting uh Yuberin, uh Martinez of Colombia a guy that I consider uh so far to be the most exciting fighter in these Olympic Games. Um, I'm probably going to do a, a video especially for him. Uh, um, and, well, he's going to be in the finals, so uh, depending on whether he wins or loses, I'm definitely going to be doing a, a video special on him because he's definitely been the best fighter of these Olympics. And against Argilagos, that was uh, no different. You know, Argilagos is more of an outboxer type. He tries to pot shot you and move, tries to, you know, take, a, take some of the drama out of the fight, make it very, uh, slow the tempo down, make it very much uh, one shot at a time, couple shots at a time, stick and move. Uh, but Martinez wasn't having it. He went in there, pulled forward, turned it into a fight, turned it into a war, turned it into a brawl. And Argilagos was even when it turned into a a, a firefight like that, was able to ha handle his own. You know, he was able to hold his own by and large. Um, but Martinez, uh, just overall with the volume, with the stamina, with the strength, was uh, just a, just a little bit too much, a little bit too overwhelming for Argilagos. Managed to defeat him. Um, I considered it kind of a two to one or a three to zero type of fight. Uh, he won by Martinez wound up winning by split decision. Argilagos came on the, the you know the bad side of it, and um, so he managed to earn himself a bronze medal. So uh, much props to him. Um, going back to Nick, uh, Nico Miguel Hernandez managed to defeat Manuel Capay of Italy um, by unanimous decision. Um, I thought he started off strong. I think that that was uh, one of the better performances that he had. Um, uh, Kapai was able to catch him a little bit in the lulls in the action because Hernandez, uh, it seems like he's a, one of these fighters sometimes where if he's not moving his hands, his in, then that means his entire body's not moving. And of course, when his entire body's not moving, that means he'll be liable to, uh, he'll be defensively liable essentially to, to get caught with some clean shots. Kapai landed a couple, but overall Hernandez managed to uh, bully him on the inside as well as outbox him on the outside. Uh, managed to get a unanimous decision over him. Just good, clean boxing overall. Um, in the, his second fight with uh, Vasily Yegorov of Russia, who was one of the medal favorites to win at these, these Olympics, um, he was able to just show just excellent, excellent timing. I think this was his best performance of the Olympics. Uh, Yegorov was uh, favored to, to uh, win a medal. Um, very fast hands, very fast feet, but Nico Hernandez was able to time him. Uh, just had the superior timing, was able to la uh, land clean, sharp shots up the middle as uh, Yegorov tried to, you know, fl flummox him with his southpaw and, and speed, his southpaw stance and his speed. Um, Hernandez wasn't having it, landed clean shots up the middle, um, clean shots on the inside, as well as um, some nice left hooks and right hands uh, from, from a distance as Yegorov was lunging forward and trying to close the distance, considering uh, Yegorov was a few inches shorter than uh, Nico Hernandez. Um, and Nico Hernandez's third fight, which was probably his most taxing fight uh, physically against Carlos Quipo of Ecuador, 
uh, Carlos Kipo pretty much drew him into a firefight on the inside from the opening bell. Um, made it a very, very tough fight for Hernandez all the way through. Um, very much a tit-for-tat type fight. Um, a fight that I think a lot of people could have seen going, going either way um, throughout. And uh, Hernandez managed to just clinch it. And especially, I think, in the third round is where he managed to clinch the victory. Where Kipo appeared to kind of tire out. Uh, Hernandez was still able to throw with uh, good volume, good accuracy. And he just barely managed to nick it over over uh, Kipo of Ecuador getting into the semifinals where he met up with uh, Uzbekistan's uh, Hassan Boy Duzmatov um, a guy that had been a little bit of an overachiever throughout the throughout these games um, guy that's on a little bit on the short side uh, went in there doing uh, a good job of closing the distance against um, Nico Hernandez uh, was able to catch him cleanly with uh, good left hands. Was able to catch him in those lows that I mentioned earlier. Um, Hernandez was doing a little bit too much of standing still on the outside as opposed to moving his hands and, you know, moving his head and his waist along with his hands, which is the type of fighter he seems to be. Um, and so he kind of gave the first round away. I thought he came on pretty well in the last minute of the first round, but overall, Duzmatov was able to control it. I thought the second round was very similar to the first round as well. Duzmatov started fast, started strong. Hernandez, I thought, closed really well in the first round in the uh, second round just as he had done in the first round but again it was too little too late he was down two rounds to, uh, to zero on the judges scorecards going into the third round the third round i thought nico hernandez actually did his best work I, it, it seemed clear that he was in desperation mode he knew that he needed to uh, do something big in the third round he came out uh, throwing punches and bunches throwing heavy shots and Honestly, I thought he won the third round. I thought he clearly won the third round. And had he done the kind of work in the third round that he had done, um, had he done that, the kind of work he'd, he'd done in the third round earlier, in the first and the second rounds, um, I think he could have won this fight uh, in the semifinals and gone on to the finals and uh, potential silver or gold medal. Uh, but it wasn't to be for him. He started a bit too late, left a little bit too much on the table. Um, and uh, in spite of the fact that he finished strong in the rounds and finished strong in the fight, uh, just wasn't enough on the judges' scorecards for him, and uh, he wound up uh, dropping a decision to Hassan Boy Duzmatov, taking home a bronze medal as well. So once again, just to recap, Joannis Aguilagos of Cuba and Nico Miguel Hernandez of the United States of America bringing home the bronze for their countries. Um, a lot of props to both of them. Aguilagos, of course, most likely is going to be, uh, we'll probably be seeing him in some future uh, amateur tournaments, Aiba World Championships and future Olympics. Um, he's a young guy, uh, 19, I believe. Uh, Nico Miguel Hernandez, 20-year-old, likely to be turning pro after these Olympics um, and will definitely get some good offers on hand, uh, poss possibly get some potential um, headlining bouts fairly early on in his pro career as uh, is generally the... Um, the situation with a lot of uh, American fighters who managed to turn pro after getting a medal in the Olympics. Um, definitely a, a boon to his career and uh, just a, a solid job from uh, both of these fighters. And uh, it'll be real interesting to see how they um, take their careers into the future. Two young guys um, with uh, pretty bright prospects looking on into the future. Um, especially for uh, Nico Hernandez with uh, regard to his uh, pro debut and um, his early pro fights considering the fact that uh, there's been a lot of increased attention on the lighter weight classes from HBO, from Showtime, from PBC. With um, you, We have the likes of Roman Gonzalez, Juan Estrada, Zhou Shiming, uh, Rashid Warren, um, uh, the Cometa brothers having been shown on uh, network TV. So I'm sure Nico Miguel Hernandez will, be, uh, will benefit greatly from their um, inroads into uh, getting the lighter weight classes shown on television as well as, as his own uh, accomplishment in these Olympics with the bronze medal. Um, excellent victories from both men and it'll be interesting to see um, how they progress into the future and uh, of course I'm going to be doing a recap once uh, we have the Yeberin Martinez versus Hassan Boy Duzmatov fight for the gold medal on Sunday which is going to be a solid fight between those two. I'm favoring uh, Yeberin Martinez however. I'm favoring him in that fight but Duzmatov has been able to pull off a couple of upsets so far. Um, his wins over uh, Nico Hernandez and Berjan Jakipov were excellent, excellent wins for him. Uh, but Martinez, to me, has been the most fun fighter of these Olympics, has been in consistent wars, and actually that may actually play against him here in the finals of uh, against Hassan Boy Duzmatov. Perhaps his body may uh, be a little bit worn down from all the wars. Perhaps uh, he may be developing a little bit of uh, potential for cuts in the fight and all that other stuff. Uh, you know, uh, tough fights uh, against every opponent that he's fought uh, so far, especially that war that he engaged in with uh, Samuel Carmona of uh, Spain. 
but just that was an incredible, incredible fight. Um, that's one that I implore anybody and everybody to try and uh, check back on. It happened on the Wednesday morning uh, portion of the, the Olympic Games, the Wednesday on the August the 10th. Uh, that was a great fight. Um, all of Martinez's fights have been excellent so far, and I think it's going to be the very much the case against Hassan Boy Duzmatov, who himself has uh, engaged in some fun fights. So I think the Clash of Styles there is going to be uh, something really, really fun to watch and potentially uh, maybe the best fight of the Olympics and uh, most likely the best uh, medal fight, uh, the best gold medal match of these Olympics. Um, but solid fights all the way around from all these guys. Uh, props to all of them. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.